So let's just let's take a look at an example. So let, let's first just look at some of the because some of these these income accounts that we have here are classic kind of things that people deal with and how we might might deal with that as they come through the bank feeds. So different kinds of deposits. So first of all, we've got this PayPal thing. Now PayPal used to be like a an intermediary kind of of platform where you would put it uh you would use paypal just so that you can transfer the money into into your checking account so if that's all you're using paypal for then maybe you don't need to do bank feeds with paypal maybe you can just wait till you transfer the money into your checking account and you can simply record it as income from whatever source whatever the source platform was as it comes into your quickbooks now that would you can only really do that or that would be best or easiest to do if you didn't have any any other uh like like all your income was coming from the same place that's just going through paypal and you're not using paypal to pay like expenses and stuff because then you're using paypal more like a more like a checking account so that's one method that you can use uh, but now PayPal is becoming more and more like a checking account. So if you have multiple sources of income going through PayPal, another method you might use is to set up PayPal as another checking account, which it kind of is these days. And therefore you would have bank feeds up top with another card of a PayPal account. And you can then record your income and your expenses in a similar way as you would with another checking account. And you would have just the intercompany uh, or enter bank account transfers between the PayPal account and your checking account when there's a transfer and we would record it that way. So we'll talk more about PayPal later. There's different integrations with PayPal you can kind of look at, but the, that's what we'll actually set up a PayPal like checking account and use the bank fees to set up PayPal. Hopefully we'll try that in a future presentation. Now, if you get paid by something like a Google, like YouTube, again, this is like gig work kind of situation. So in that case, I'm, you might just make an account called called uh, Google Income, right? Or YouTube Income. And, and you'd be using the name of the customer in essence in that case. Uh, but that would be appropriate because I'm just recording the income directly from the platform that's given it to me and I'm not using invoices or sales receipts. So we'll do that later. If you get paid by like teaching platforms like a Skillshare or something similar thing, you're just getting paid by a platform so you might just call it like Skillshare income. If you're using something like a Stripe, that's another intermediary kind of, of uh, transactional uh, tool similar to PayPal, but Stripe is usually designed specifically as an intermediary tool and not so much as like another bank account. So you might have different Stripe integrations that can help you pull more detail from your Stripe into your, into your business account. We might talk more about that in future presentations but if you if but that can get kind of complicated because do you want all that added detail in your system or not if you make sales on like a website do you want to have all your customer detail information pull into quickbooks or would it be better to summarize that information in quickbooks and have all that other detail in stripe or wherever you have it coming from so one method you can use, we'll just do here is we'll just imagine all of our Stripe income is coming from like a website or something like that. You could wait till it comes into your checking account and simply record it as whatever it's coming from. You could say it's a website income or whatever. And then all the added detail that's coming through Stripe, instead of having it within QuickBooks, you can then pull that from the Stripe page and then your QuickBooks is not weighted down with all that added detail, but maybe you want all that added detail in QuickBooks, which means you might use some integrations to help pull it into Stripe, which we're not gonna get into here, but we might dive into in, in its own kind of presentation or uh, course. Then Audible is another one. If you get money from Audible, then again, you could just, that's like you're just getting paid by a platform for royalties or whatever. So then you could just record it as income as it comes, as it comes through, possibly just calling it Audible income. And then, uh, and then, so Amazon, same kind of thing. If you sell stuff with Amazon, it gets a little bit more complex uh, and you might need to integrate with Amazon. So there's, there's tools that you can use that are apps that help you to kind of integrate your transactions with Amazon. But if you're just getting paid by, for like, for like 
Amazon Prime or like video, you know, royalties or something, then then you might just call it when it comes through Amazon, <laughs> Amazon income, right? Because it's just another platform that is coming through. Amazon might have multiple different things that they pay you for, which you can which you can usually see as differentiated with their with their transaction detail. Interest obviously uh, might be just you just record that basically as uh, interest income. So let's imagine that I'm going to record one of these in place that are, are like the easiest thing like Stripe. I'm going to imagine it's coming from a website and I'm just going to record it as like website income. So this would be like the easiest way to do it, right? I'm just going to say, all right, Stripe is here. They're trying to record it as, as a transfer. Uh, I'm not going to record it as a transfer. It's recording it as a transfer because it's coming from another uh, another like like what you might think of as a bank type of account if you were to try to integrate with Stripe, but I'm just going to record it as a category. Again, you could use apps to try to integrate. QuickBooks is trying to come up with new integration apps, but sometimes that's a little bit of an overkill. So you want to really think about before you, you know, set up those integrations. Do you need them? <laughs> what what added information? What stuff do you need in QuickBooks versus outside? Do you need to bloat the QuickBooks to have that added information? or is it good enough to have that in uh, the Stripe area? So in any case, I'm gonna say there is that, the customer or vendor. Again, you might just call it Stripe. I'll just call it Stripe, which is not exactly correct because of course the customer, if it was coming from a website, might be that it's coming from multiple customers that, that are from uh, the website. But if I'm selling like $5 items and I have thousands of sales, do I really want all the customers coming through into QuickBooks? That's you know one of the questions you wanna have before you do the integration. All right, and then we've got the category. So I'm gonna just set up a new account as I go because it's gonna be an income type of account. And I only have you know these generic income accounts here. And I'm gonna say, I wanna get detailed basically in my gig work in terms of which platforms are paying us. So I am gonna set up a, an, an account by in essence who's paying us which is a deviation from the general rule in a full service accounting system uh, 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 if i was using a sales receipt or an invoice so that's going to say this is going to be an income account and i'm going to say just other primary income and i'm just going to call it website income with the with the imagination i'm just making this up that this stuff is coming from a website sales or something like that so that's what i'm going to put it for instead of just saying stripe income right because what's the stripe is there collecting income for a particular thing generally would be the idea and so i'm going to save it and now of course uh let's save it and close that we could make a rule for that now so let's make a similar process i'm just going to make the rules as we go on the deposit side similar to what we did on the expense side I'm just going to call it Stripe rule again, and this time it's a money in rule instead of a money out rule. You can have a particular account or all accounts. We're going to say that it's going to be any or all. I'm, it doesn't matter because I'm only going to have one condition. We'll talk about multiple conditions more later. I'm going to say I want it from the bank text. I like that better than the memo typically. And then I'm just going to say it contains, and I just want Stripe. As long as it says Stripe, then I'm good to go with it. So I'll keep the Stripe and then deposit uh, type category website income stripe and so i'm not going to auto add it i'm going to want to check them as we go so i'm going to go ahead and save that so same thing we did now i've got these rules that are set up here let's go up top and i can filter now by the recognized items so the ones that are recognized and here are the stripes so let's just try to add like just some of the the stripe stuff so one way we can do that, if I just try to select these ones, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna put my cursor here and then I'm gonna scroll down to the end of the Stripe stuff. 